So I had a testimony of the Book of Mormon when I when I went out. I really did have a testimony of the Book of Mormon. We uh, we used to get together as friends. There was ten of us that were buddies at Bountiful High School, and it started as just more of a way to get a good breakfast. So we would meet at one guy's house at like six thirty in the morning, and we'd read the Book of Mormon together. And our, you can imagine how thrilled your moms were, right? So our moms were so thrilled, they would put on the biggest breakfast you'd ever seen. I mean, they would get up and cook their best breakfast. I mean, seriously, their best breakfast. So we did it at first just to get the good breakfast. But as we, as we continued to read throughout the year, we, we really did understand, come to understand the Book of Mormon in a way that we hadn't. So I, I, felt, I felt exactly that testimony of the mustard seed that if, if you plant it and it starts to grow and swell within your breast, you know it's a true seed and, you, and you've got to nurture it. So that's how my testimony started. And it grew to where I couldn't deny the Book of Mormon. But I didn't have a real strong testimony of, of Jesus Christ, of the Holy Ghost, and how they testify one another and our Heavenly Father. So I didn't, I guess I didn't have a great relationship with Heavenly Father. I knew that the Book of Mormon was true, and I knew that there was truth to our gospel, but I didn't have uh, a real knowledge and friendship and understanding. So in the mission field, I don't think you can survive without really understanding and having a relationship with Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and having a understanding of how the Holy Ghost works because it worked miracles. I mean, it would work if you understood it, you knew when you were going to have success and you knew when you were testifying that what you were testifying of was, was true. And uh, I can tell you, we went into one guy's house, um, Elder uh, Brother Lim, Chinese guy, right? Only Chinese guy. Actually, we baptized two Chinese. But this guy was Chinese. He lived in one of these great big compounds where you could not get in. Glass on the glass on the top of the wall that was six feet tall. One little entry that you'd have to knock on and the house help would come out and say, oh, no, 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 we're not interested. Well, somehow the, the car door, there was gates for the cars to go in and out. And the gate was open and we walked past and we saw Brother Lemon. He was in a wheelchair. And we said, hey, how you doing? And he looked up and, no, oh, come on, come on in. And he waved us in. And the house help was trying to shoo us away. He said, no, 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 no. Let them come in. And he has a swimming pool. And this is a beautiful compound. You know, a beautiful house. Uh, not something that we would ever even consider living in. But we go in. And by U.S. standards, a pretty normal house. But in the Philippines, it was like uh, opulent. But he ends up, from the minute we started teaching him the Book of Mormon, I, the Spirit really testified to us that he needed him, and we, had, we were guided to him. It wasn't just a random walk by. We, we had really focused on this area, and we didn't know why, because you don't get any success knocking on these doors. Anyway, we finally got into him, and he was the most golden investigator. He read, the, from the first time we met him to the second time we met him, he read the first half, half of the Book of Mormon and asked me a question that no one asked me in my entire mission. He said, when Alma was baptized, he baptized himself and one of, his, one of the guys he was with. Who authorized Alma to do the baptism? Where did he get the authority to do it? Because he knew that they needed authority. And so we had to, um, I'm, he stumped me. I had to go back and research it. But um, anyway, he became, he, when, when we finally committed him to baptism, I was a little jealous of him. I said, you know, I'm... So jealous, you've lived your entire life however you've wanted, and now you found the gospel this late in your life. He was old, and he said, he slapped his knee and looked me in the eye and said, you don't understand. My life would have been much more fulfilled, much more rich, much fuller, had I understood the gospel when I was young, like you are. So you are the fortunate one, which affected me. It changed me a little bit. So we baptized him in his pool, carried him in, baptized him, and he died like six months later. So, before I left, he died. So anyway, my, my testimony changed. He changed my attitude. I was never, I was never regretful of having the gospel of my life after that. Up until then, I thought, wow, I could live riotously until you Right before you die and then learn the gospel and die with the gospel, then you'd be saved. It'd be great. But uh, he changed my opinion about that.